Welcome back to the shop. Today we have a little bit of a different project in mind. Uh, anybody who's ever done any sort of printing knows that, um, well, you get stuck with a mess kind of like this. Uh, this is uh, leftover filament from each roll that's towards the end. It's not enough by itself to print anything with. Uh, but you know, you still want to save it and uh, possibly use it for smaller projects. The problem becomes is, this is only about a third of what I have. And uh, I've been printing this stuff uh, pretty well since before Christmas. And I've gone through about 10 or 15 kilos worth. And um, I always get left with something in the end. So I got to looking and there's a uh, there's a few people who've made the uh, filament joining uh, jigs out there but I'll be frank with you for the price that they sell some of the jigs out there some of them are way overpriced and some of them are so cheap it, why would you even bother making it? So today we're going to be making some accessories to go on with one of the least expensive filament joining kits and I'll show you how I get about joining all of these into one roll and uh, before we go ahead this is what the filament joining kit looks like um, it's a small basically it's a chunk of aluminum a couple of nuts on it comes with a little allen key it splits open and there's a channel, a 1.75 millimeter channel. One side is aluminum, so you can get your quick cooling, and the other one is PTFE. Um, while it's not the most precise thing in the world, I think it's actually pretty good for the money. I think they're about 10 bucks to ship for something like this, so 10, 15 bucks. You could spend half a day making this in the shop. Not that I can't make it here in the shop, but. Uh, Sometimes you just buy a tool and test it out. The other problem arises once you join two pieces of foam and you're left with basically two rolls like this. And these rolls are literally sitting on your desk and you're doing this. And sometimes you get lucky and it's something like this where it's not a terrible amount of filament. Other times I have something like this left over, which is a whole lot more filament. And um, I really just don't want to sit there twiddling these. So being that I have some filament that I can basically use, I've decided to come up with a kit, or I should say a system, where uh, I can use my hand and crank one side, bolt it onto my bench here, and uh, crank one side in. The other, one side, the other side stays loose. Use this thing in the middle. And let's get the show on the road. I'm going to show you the winder set up first and then uh, I'm going to join some filament. Alright. So the setup is kind of simple. Uh, I've designed these blocks that have. I don't know if you can see that difficult to film black but basically it's an indented space for a nut and these blocks will get clamped down to the table and I'm recycling this spool holder from my old uh, 3D printer and what it basically is is a spool holder with bearings I tend to abuse these bearings these are the cheap old roller skate bearings you get from uh, your usual places and um, basically, if you if you tighten the bearings axially, they kind of start to eat themselves up. But it also serves as a decent brake, so it it doesn't just freewheel. You have some drag, which you do want when you're winding or unwinding. In the case of what this used to be, um, the other part of the design is a hand crank handle for the hand crank and a secondary. Uh, um, spool holder I guess the bottom portion of it so without further ado 
let's get on to make, uh, putting this together. One of the things that I did want to mention is uh, you do need uh, some all thread. I buy the 72 inch uh, long all thread uh, uh, 5 16 um, So basically these are half inch nuts. Um, I, I should say 15 16 um, Your mileage may vary. Uh, these designs are, uh, will work with 8 millimeter as well if you're on the other side of the planet. So first things first we want to embed these nuts into this. So I'm, I'm screwing in a small stud here like so. Screwing in should probably gone ahead and embedded the nut and the bearing on these, the bearing on this, and these as well. So now it's time to cut the all thread. They do say a lot of projects begin on the band so This is a case of smoke them if you got them, but um, the all thread has been cut to length and uh, I want to round up uh, the ends of it uh, into a ball. Well you could do this with a file, I choose not to. So we're now back at the bench. These have very nice ball ends. They don't hurt you. Now I'm going to take some cork and glue it to the bottom of these feet for traction.
So until now you've probably been wondering how is he gonna hold these down to the table. They're not exactly stable, right? Well this is where this comes in. These clamps are designed to go in here and then come to the edge of the table like so. Give it a good crank. And now it's holding steady. So now it's time to start joining filament. First thing you want to do, you want to make sure that it's not brittle. I'm using PLA here, and sometimes it does get brittle, sometimes it doesn't, but regardless, you want the tip as straight as possible, there's a natural curve to this, so you give it a good straightening, and you insert it into the actual tool. I usually use a small candle, sorry, I don't have a lighter, and the candle, you usually put this on top, you heat up the tip of the filament, and you join them. So, I usually take some sort of uh, knife we are any any anything that could could, could potentially clog the uh, hot end this is something that does need practice you might try it 10 or 20 times sometimes the, the weld is brittle sometimes it's not Sometimes it's crooked. Uh, but overall, now I get to align my filament from the left one to the right one. Without making a mess. done well thanks for watching this and if you want to buy some of the supplies that I used during this video or you want to give it a thumbs up or subscribe I would appreciate any and all of those things thank you very much bye bye